Hey guys, in today's video, we're gonna be going over our entire breakdown and setup routine on moving day. We're gonna take you through everything that we do on a moving day and teach you little tips and tricks that we've learned after a couple years during this process. I'm hoping you find value in this video because when we were researching this lifestyle, this was one of my biggest concerns was what does moving day look like? What do you do with all your stuff on the counters? So, you know, like how long does this process take so we're hoping to answer some of those questions for you guys over the last two years our process has changed quite a bit when we first started we took other people's recommendations and we left some of the heavier stuff on the counters like our knife block because it's just easier but after coming in after a couple moving days and having knives splayed across your floor you uh you start to change so now we store everything on the floor and uh securely and quite a few other things like following a checklist which is a very important part of our process now yes so our checklist we created for ourselves but we ended up putting it on our getaway couple store where we have a ton of rv printables so we actually expanded it to motor homes and other items that we don't have for example, a satellite dish, but some people have that. So we tried to make this as thorough as possible and not really a generic checklist. This should cover almost everyone's different lifestyle on the road. But having a checklist right in front of you is always good because if someone comes up and starts talking to you, or if you're a little bit out of your routine and you're picking up your rig from a service center like we were once, you, realize that you'll forget things when your routine isn't exactly how it normally is. So we highly recommend having a checklist in front of you at all times, every single time you move your rig. It's also important to know how to do everything yourself. We have fallen into roles where I do most of the stuff on the inside, Jason does most of the stuff on the outside, but we have intentionally switched roles so that way we both know exactly what to do because you never know in case of an emergency which one of you might be needing to do all of the tasks. So with that said, let's just hop into what we do on moving day. I start breaking down the inside by doing the living room first. I fold our blanket and put Carmen's dog toys on top of it to protect the couch. I put all of the pillows on one couch and ensure the TV is lowered. This is also where we keep our camera equipment and it's normally laying around, so I put it all away in our storage bag and put that in the cupboard. I always double check that all of the cupboards are closed. Picture frames go into another cupboard above the recliners. I then like to wipe down the counters and fireplace and then vacuum. This is not only being clean, but it's a great way to double check there isn't anything left in front of the slides. Moving on to the bedroom, I take our books and air purifier off the dresser and place them on the bed. I take our phone chargers out of the outlets and place those on the bed as well. I make sure the closet door is locked, closed, and all of the drawers are firmly shut. I then do another quick wipe down in here and vacuum. A little trick that I like to do is actually turn all of the lights on in the RV before I start cleaning. So then when I know I'm completely done with the room and it's ready for moving day, I turn off the light. Moving on to the bathroom, I actually try to clean as I put stuff away in this room. I'll clean the mirror and then start removing all of the items from the counter. Our soap dispenser goes under the counter and then I clean the sink before putting all of the other items inside. I wrap our glass cup in the hand towel and place it inside the sink. Once everything is removed, I wipe down the backsplash and lock the shower door in place. We don't have to put anything away inside the shower since all of our stuff is contained within this suction cup storage container. I then make sure to close and lock the bathroom door and turn off the light. Moving on to the kitchen. I start with the counter space in our entryway. Everything on here goes into our pantry. I leave anything that needs to go into the truck in this space so I don't forget it. It's typically snacks, water, and Jason's wallet. I then put away all of our dishes, I close the lid on the stove, and begin moving the items on the counter to the floor. 
We put most of the counter items under our chairs in our dining room slide, and then we put the bulkier items like our coffee maker and our blender against the wall in this same slide. The lighter remaining counter items go into the sink. I place a dish towel in the sink first as it protects the stainless steel from scratches. Ask me how I know this. I then dry off the dish drainer and place it in front of the coffee maker on the floor. I have a backpack on the floor that we put our laptops in and then I wipe down the table. Now that the counters are clear, I wipe them off and turn off the lights. And lastly, I vacuum the floors and Jason takes out the trash. Moving on to the outside tasks, I empty the black tank first and begin the flush as it's the most time consuming outdoor task. If you don't have time in the morning, you can do this step the night before to save time. Once the black tank is flush, I open the kitchen tank and let that drain for a bit, and then open the shower tank. Leave both of those open until no more water is draining. We recommend a clear elbow hose so you can see what's going on. With the tanks empty, it's time to put on some gloves and put the black tank hose away. Always disconnect the drain from your RV first and hold it up to ensure that any water remaining in the hose empties down towards the drain. Put away your hose support if you have one and then remove your gloves and wash your hands. Then you can disconnect your freshwater hose and be sure not to leave your pressure regulator on the spigot. Not saying that from experience. We then disconnect our freshwater hose from the RV side so that when we're wrapping it up, all the extra water is coming out the spigot end and not into our wet bay. We change our Nautilus panel from city water to dry camping just in case we need to use the water pump on the road. To disconnect your electrical, make sure you turn off the power at the pole first, then disconnect from your RV and wrap your cable up. Next, we take the remaining items to the truck and put our dog Carmen in there as well. At this point, we typically turn on the engine to warm it up and turn on the AC or heater for Carmen. Make sure to turn off your water heater, air conditioners, close any fan vents, and turn off all of the remaining lights. When everything is off, we start bringing in the slides. Note that if you're in a campground with trees, you'll want to sweep off your slides before bringing them in. If you have any doors that don't have latches, close them. Once our last slide is in, I sweep off the stairs and put them away. Don't forget to lock your door and place the handlebar in front of it. Now it's time to hitch up. While Jason reverses the truck, I'm at the control panel just to make sure the kingpin is at the right level. Once our hitch clamps closed, we plug in the electrical cord and connect the emergency breakaway cable. It's important to do a pull test with your jack still down to ensure the kingpin is locked in properly. When you know you're good to go, retract your jacks and remove your chocks. With all of your equipment put away, it's time to do one more walk around. This is when you wanna lock all of your baggage doors, check that all of your slides went in all of the way, your jacks are fully retracted, and check your lights. Then have your spotter stand where the driver wants them and begin pulling out to your next destination. Once you arrive at your next campground, you may be shown to your site by the staff, which is always nice because they typically know the easiest path. If you aren't shown to your site, always ask for the best route through the campground to get there. Once you get to your site, test that the water works and you have the proper electrical connection that you requested. If you have a surge protector, you can test that the electrical pole is working properly with that. Scout the site for any debris or low-hanging branches first, and then begin to guide your rig in. 
We had an extra spotter at this campground, so Jason told him where he wanted him to be. It's always great to have extra eyes, but make sure that you're telling them where you want them to be and not the other way around. Once our rig is in the site, we ensure we can open the slides with our handy orange ruler that we've marked the length of our slides on. And then we check how unlevel the rig is to determine if we need blocks anywhere. If we're off by more than a degree and a half, we know we need to use the levelers under our tires. Once we have the levelers under our tires, it's time to chalk our tires and bring down the front jacks. We then remove the electrical cord and the breakaway cable from the truck and open the jaws of the hitch. Jason moves the truck forward while I fold up the cables and put them in the kingpin. We then press auto level and let our solitude do its thing. If you don't have auto level, this is where you will manually level your rig. Jason and I typically both set up the outside to save time. We plug in the electrical, hook up the water, and set up our sewer hose. Basically, we're doing the reverse of what we showed you during takedown. Next, we open the slides. It's important to have a spotter when you're opening your slides to make sure you're not going to hit anything just in case you measured wrong or missed something in your initial scan of the site. With the slides open, we bring Carmen inside and begin putting items back on the counter in the kitchen. We set up our entryway the way we like it. We put the living room back in order, take the items out of our bathroom sink, and put our air purifier and books back on the dresser. All right, and that's our moving day. So this process took us a lot longer today because of filming, but just so you have some reference, Packing up normally takes us about two hours. That's from the moment we open our eyes on moving day to the second we're driving out of the campground. And the reason it takes so long is because dumping and flushing takes about 30 minutes. So if we want to get out a little sooner, we do that process the night before. We also are really messy people. We didn't really show you that today, but we will clean the night before as well if we need to hurry up and get out. So if we clean and empty our tanks the night before, we can normally be out within an hour. Setting up is a lot easier. We're actually able to set up water electric sewer within five to 10 minutes if we're both working on it. And then pulling out the slides and putting everything back where it goes honestly takes maybe 30 seconds to a minute per room. You may have noticed that we don't have a ton of decor or things out on our counters. And after two years of being on the road and moving almost weekly, that's pretty much how we like it. We also showed you a pretty clean rig and that is not the typical norm for us. Between us and Carmen, we're kind of crazy clutter people with shoes everywhere and Carmen's hair. So we really like moving day because it forces us to clean everything and it just makes us feel like we're starting off fresh every week. Another thing we didn't show you today was lunch. Our drive today was 20 miles, so not a bad driving day at all. Typically, on a moving day, I pack lunch in the morning and I put it in the fridge. It makes it so much easier to not stress about where we can get food on the road while towing, because your options are very limited when you do that to yourself. And we're able to access one fridge door with all of our slides in, which is a huge bonus. And if you're considering new floor plans, that's actually a big tip that we recommend people to look at is, can you access your fridge, bathroom, and bedroom with your slides in? We do get a few repeat questions when it comes to asking us about our moving day. And one of those is, do you travel with your blinds open or closed? So we normally travel with our blinds closed, but we don't really care if they're open. It's kind of just on our checklist of habits to just close all the blinds. And that's more of a, a heat thing and a privacy thing, but you can't really see into the RV from the road anyway. So it doesn't really matter if a window's open, we don't really stress about it. 
Yeah, and the only argument we've heard for keeping all of your blinds open while traveling is, well, what if a cop's driving by and wants to look inside your rig? First of all, you can't see through these windows, so I highly doubt that would be the case. And if a cop is trying to look through the windows of your rig, I'm sure he'd be pulling you over to do that and not trying to be a little peeper from the road. So that's the only argument we've heard for blinds open and we don't care. The next question we get a lot and is actually a hot topic in the RV community. I see it on the Facebook groups all the time and I see people arguing in the comments all the time. So we are officially gonna give our stance on this topic today, so don't kill us. But that question would be, do you travel with your propane tanks open or closed? So we travel with our propane tanks open because we use our fridge on propane when we're traveling. Well, we have left it on electric while traveling before, now that we have the batteries and the inverter, it just draws a ton of power. And especially if we're boondocking, we just don't want to waste that power while we're going down the road. Yes, and even with our solar panels and even with the charge from the truck while we're traveling, the fridge still manages to suck more power than we can draw in on the road. I do also want to add a note here that we turn our propane tanks off if we will be traveling through tunnels that require them off. There are a couple in Washington and we ran across a couple on the East Coast as well. So just be mindful of your travel day and if you'll be going through any tunnels like that. And we also keep them off when we are fueling up. The next question we get is, do you travel with your air conditioners on? Well, we haven't. Uh, they do draw a ton of power and once again, our batteries could handle it, but we don't really see the need. Carmen travels with us in the car and for the most part, even if the RV does heat up, we'll just turn the ACs once we get finished uh, plugging in our electrical here. And with both the ACs running, it'll cool down the RV while we finish setting up outside by the time we get back inside. The next question we've received a couple of times is, do you travel with pets in the trailer? Uh, we don't recommend traveling with your pets in the trailer. They do heat up just like a car, except for you're not able to really track the temperature in them as well. And then it's just kind of scary. Everything's rattling and shaking. So just bring them in the car with you. Yes. And even if you're thinking about crating them and putting them in your trailer, we still don't recommend that because of it's scary for them and it gets hot in here. But also if you are in any type of accident or emergency, you might not be able to access your pet. So it's just something we highly advise against. All right, I think that's it. So if you wanna snag our arrival or departure checklist, we do have them available at store.getawaycouple.com under our RV printables. If you didn't know that we created and sell these printables online, we have over 75 different worksheets and pages all related to RV life. So go check those out if you haven't. If you have any other questions about our moving day, don't hesitate to throw those in the comments and we'll get back to you. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to join our getaway gang. We'll see you next time. Bye, Bye guys. guys. Damn. <laughs> Ready? Oh, no. <laughs> Let's try this again. Wait. <laughs> However, just so you have some... Don't look at her. Look at me. Let's sit down. Let's stand up for me. She's so okay. cute. <laughs> okay, are you ready? Yeah. One. Look at her little paws on the pillow. Oh my goodness. And even if you have... She's snoring so loud. Once the blank, blank. Once the black tank is flush, I open the kitchen tank, tank, open the blank. Oh. <laughs> Shut up. Be sure not to leave your pressure, pressure regular. We then disconnect our freshwater hose from the RV first and no.
Once we have our levelers. <laughs> Once we have our levelers. <laughs> I can't say that word. <laughs> Once we have our levelers sorted. <laughs> leveler. <laughs> Once we have our levelers sorted, it's time. <laughs> I gotta say a different word. 